While at Gothenburg Botanical Gardens in Sweden, Osa Kruger introduced me to her colleague, who also happened to be named Osa, in order to take me through the orchid house. She had recently taken over the care of the orchids, which admittedly came with some learning curves. So how did you get involved in orchids? Oh, it, it happened uh, some years ago. My colleague, mm -hmm. who she had been taking care about the orchids for 25 years, oh, and wow. she's so good at it. And then she decided to finish working here and uh, go to work on her family uh, plant uh, sales center. <laughs> and then I got so scared. <laughs> First I thought, oh my God, am I going to take care about all these fantastic orchids? And this collection is, of course, quite well famous in Sweden. <laughs> or in, and uh, we have many species and they are just fantastic. So the first years I just tried to learn as much as I could and yeah. now I really, really love it. So she didn't leave you high and dry, she gave you a few tips. She did, she okay. did. I, I tried to walk behind her and just see what she did and how she did it and try to learn everything I could from her. I asked if she could share some of her learnings in the process about orchid care and growing. We often will buy orchids in bloom, so when they lose their blooms, one of the most common questions is, how do I get them to rebloom again? Everybody asks how to get their orchids flowering. Mm -hmm. And often, that the difficult thing is getting the cold nights and the colder winters in these, in these apartment, nice apartments with all good climates. So I have my orchids on the windowsill, and it was really when my children wanted to watch TV they thought the, the sun was really not good. <laughs> so I have this um, thick curtain which um, takes out the light. So it's quite thick, plasticky, horrible thing. But when I take it down, the orchids are on the other side uh, in between the glass and this curtain thing, and it gets colder. Mm. In the night, it gets definitely colder. And uh, the winters, yeah, they get their cool time to produce uh, flowers. So you get them to reflower often yeah. by providing a little bit of cold spell just on your drafty window cells. Yes. That's a very good tip. Yeah. I was also intrigued by both the cultural and biological control she was implementing in order to combat pests like slugs and spider mites. You have some cotton here. What is this for? Yeah. It looks so stupid, but I, I don't really know what to do. We, we have this problem with small, really horrible snails mm -hmm. snails not with houses yeah, but yeah, the yeah. ones snails. slugs slugs yeah that's it slugs yeah, yeah. and they uh, they get up in the night mm -hmm. and often i i wait for a flower and yeah. i see it coming and perhaps it's the first time there's a bud yeah. and then when i come here in the morning i see some slime and a big hole and no buds and when the cotton is dry they don't like to climb through it or crawl through it. You know what, that's, um, it, it, you know, it may look a little dumb, but like you said, it's, yeah. it stops the slugs from eating the leaf. So yeah. that is a really nice, easy thing. Everybody has a cotton ball and an elastic yeah. band that you could, could tie I mean, around. It, these ones are their, fa are their favorites. Hmm. So uh, it, it's really horrible. We also use uh, biological control. Mm -hmm. So we water out nematodes. Nematodes. Nematodes, yeah. 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 Uh, in spring and in autumn, we water with nematodes. And we buy these little packages with 50 million nematodes <laughs> and uh, mix them with water and yeah. water them out. And they are infecting the uh, slugs. Mm -hmm. And so that's also working. But it's much better after we started this uh, watering with nematodes, mm -hmm. but still they find their favorites. And so well, I always think with like biological control, it's nice to do multiple different yeah. types yeah. of things because you never know when you're getting life cycle and right. you know and, and and so if you have like some cultural control like you're doing with the cotton swabs and then you have some biological control with the nematodes I mean even indoors when I'm uh, when I I'd use biological control in my own house yeah. so sometimes I'll have like green lace wings and then yeah. predatory mites or yeah. something like that and and because you never you just never know when they're you know, in a different stage exactly. than... Yeah, that's my experience too, that you have to do it repeatedly mm -hmm. and uh, also all sorts of things mm -hmm. and try to get a big mixture. And um, it is a good thing when I started here, we, we still used chemicals mm -hmm. 
and uh, people said, oh, well, you will always need the chemicals. We wouldn't know what to do without the chemicals. And now, I mean, what to do without all the biological control? I, I would don't know how we could do it because we use a lot. Um, every Thursday in the, in the season, in the summer season, we get uh, our package. So we, every week we order uh, insects. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And or predatory mites. Yes. Yeah, and it yeah. works really well. It's very, very good. Yeah, I, and you know what I like about it too, is that they work for you when you're sleeping. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Even when you're not working, they're working. <laughs> it's uh, perfect, and it's it's also a nice way to to show people to, to how how it works together. All the if not the insects, the the good insects, they eat the insects that eat the plants, and that's really cool. In the summer. We had problems with the spider mites, uh -huh. so we put these bags out, and they are really good because they are working for a long time. Mm -hmm. So these bags um, contain eggs and also grown-ups of these uh, spider these um, mites that eat spider mites, and they climb out of a little hole in the bag mm -hmm. and continuously eat these spider mites. So it's working really, really well, and I don't know what we would do without them, really. I often, I often uh, see these in botanical gardens, the little yeah. baggies that hang up. Although I never see them as baggies for, you know, for personal use. So no. it'll, be, it'll be very interesting maybe um, to see where you could actually get these, because that seems yeah. to be a little bit practical, because otherwise I'm spreading them all over into yeah. like each individual pot. Yeah. But it seems a little cleaner, even though it does. it's no. not, not as visually stimulating. Did you take a close-up here? Mm -hmm. I now see it said, says Andersoni, so it's yeah. not the ordinary spider mite. Yes. It's the false spider mite. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, as long as we have another problem with these bags, it's that the co cockroaches eat them, oh. the bags. Wow. <laughs> so not, not, it's not always so good. But yeah. uh, And then I think the insects, the good insects here, they are so small, you really tiny, no, hardly. Yeah. Yeah. So if you spread it out, uh, it, they, it's easier for them to find their prey. Mm -hmm. They have to walk quite long to mm -hmm. walk out of the bag and to yeah. find. But they are really good. Osa had some thoughts on why orchids can be challenging for some plant lovers. Yeah, it, it, it's, the orchids are different from other plants, right? Mm -hmm. they, they are they, at first, I thought they are not communicating to me, <laughs> but it's because, like begonias and other plants, they just oh, they uh, they show that they Wilt. want water. Yeah. Wilt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the orchids, they are like, uh, like leaves are harder, and uh, so you have to be patient with orchids. You have to you have to be really patient, uh, so they and not water too much until they start growing and they want water. And then you need to take care about them and see what they, try to, try to imagine what they want and do it for a long time. And then they will start growing. When repotting orchids, she cautions not to overwater them. And I have these little red labels. Yes. Yeah, that, uh, that says uh, newly repotted. So not too much water, it only gets a little uh, little shower uh, because uh, that's one of the things when you repot an orchid you can kill it by overwatering very very easily mm -hmm. and then uh, then it's really crucial to to wait for the roots to grow and if you do this at home uh, if you have a quite a dry climate where you live I, I think it's a good idea to put the plastic bag on over it because it might not look so nice for a while but I think of it as uh, like uh, economy with water. If, if the plant have very weak roots and cannot take up any water, you need to make the, um, uh, the water go away slower. Yeah, you, you, yeah exactly. You need to transpire less yeah. and keep the humidity exactly. in the plant so at least yeah. it's maintaining the humidity in its leaves. Yes, yeah. this is it. And yeah. then it has time to grow roots and when it has roots again, it can grow. <laughs> And, uh, and of course, it's because they grow epiphytic that we use this uh, mixture with the thick bark, pieces of bark, and we have sphagnum from the forest. Mm -hmm. And then uh, this for uh, 
for, from the grill. So charcoal. Charcoal. Yeah. 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 And so that's a really good mixture that has been used here for ages, so I don't want to change anything yeah. about that. And for mounted varieties, she found an interesting strategy to affix them onto the wood mounts. I also have another tri trial thing, that, yeah. but I think it's quite safe because I've seen it in the Kew Gardens. Oh. It's, we use, uh, use just to, to mimic the epiphytic mm -hmm. uh, way of uh, growing, we put them on here with the fishing line mm -hmm. and it's really difficult to work with mm -hmm. because it's if you do it too tight it cuts through the roots mm -hmm. and it's really difficult to tie and then at Kew Gardens they use stockings oh wow yeah. little nylon stockings. nylon stockings yeah unfortunately we not many people in the garden <laughs> use nylon <laughs> stocking but it's really a good material and I hope it lasts very long because yeah. it's such a huge uh, job to uh, do all this so it has to last for many years to be good. Wow, what a cool little tip right there with nylon <laughs> stockings. Use your own nylon yeah. stockings. <laughs> well, thank you so much. I mean, this has been a real pleasure and kind of just learning a little bit more about orchids and how you're caring for them and how you troubleshoot. Because troubleshooting, I think, is the most interesting thing because we all have different conditions. Yeah. I hope these orchid tips give you some new ideas for growing orchids indoors. Share any interesting tips you may have with the community in the comments below. And I love producing helpful plant content for all of you, so if you're enjoying this channel, consider subscribing and hitting that notifications bell. Additionally, you can support the channel through our sustaining member program or check out our current resources like the 125 Houseplant Care Spreadsheet and our Houseplant Masterclass, which is the first online audiovisual course that covers houseplant care, cultivation, and more, and includes the 350 Houseplant Care Spreadsheet. We make all of that easy for you with links below in the description or on homesteadbrooklyn.com.